So in these years, 14, 15 years, since the bridge building began, what sort of bridges have been built between China and the UK? Well, uh, there was a bridge being built at that time. It was uh, sending teachers from China, from, sorry, from Britain to China. And those teachers came home and talked about China. Um, I wanted something more. I wanted something connecting the Catholic Church of Britain and the Catholic Church of China for a number of reasons. Because <clears throat> while I was there, I learned so much about the faith of the people of China and how they sustained their faith during the most difficult of times. And all this recalled for me stories from my grandparents about mass rocks in Ireland and hiding from uh, times of persecution. And I felt the Catholic Church in China had something to say to the Catholic Church in Britain. Who would understand it? Because the Catholic Church in Britain also suffered greatly in the, in the, um, after the time of Henry VIII and during the time of Elizabeth. Um, secondly, what was also clear was that Chinese culture had a lot to offer. There was a way of doing things, a way of understanding, and a way of approaching that I felt could offer something to Britain. And of course, naturally, I felt that the Catholic Church in Britain, England, Wales, and Scotland, would be able to offer something to, to the Chinese Catholic Church as it was trying to resurrect itself. So a lot of the bridges were then helping the Catholic Church in China to resurrect itself from a state of extinction. Um, Deng Xiaoping opened up China in general uh, in the economic field and then the, cat the, the religions of China were opened up and that allowed people to study abroad and allowed people to go to China to work with the seminaries in China. So we began bringing students out from China to study in Britain, in the United States, in Australia and in Ireland. And uh, they began to study basic topics <clears throat> because many of the teachers who went back to the seminaries after the opening up were older men and older sisters who had very little training and who were just, who had years of being out of contact with any church situation. And uh, they were not prepared to train people. So we needed new people to train people. But the one thing the older people had, which was just without comparison, was their story. That they could tell the story to the young people who were going in, who were the children and grandchildren of people whose grandparents were killed or whose grandparents suffered in the persecution or things like that. And that was a very important formation. But they did also need theology, philosophy, and they needed particularly, which we've moved into in recent years, human and spiritual uh, training, which is vital.